Okay. Yeah, it's recording. Yeah. Cool. Uh, hey guys, I'm Reepa, and this is not a part time YouTube video. So, I've been working on something, and I think I've talked about it a few times on my Twitter page. But I'm um, just moving forward with what the library is about for people who don't know what I'm trying to build. Uh, basically, it's a CSS and JS library. I know there's like tons of them out there already, but um, this is something I wanted to try to build, just to see if I could actually learn what I uh, learn it and obviously learn it and maybe add a little bit of twist and a few things. But okay, so getting to it. So what inspired the library is uh, so if you don't know Andrew, Andrew works on quite a few stuff and one of his repositories, Theminator or Theminator, whatever you want to call it, has been around for a bit of a while, like about a year or so. And he's never really published it. So I just went through the library. I thought it was a cool concept and I wanted to recreate it, but actually change it to something that was a little more performant when working with uh, this works, but it is not really recommended to do this while you can actually use this. It's not really recommended to do it. Uh, I actually have tried to replicate the whole thing from scratch. I have not taken up any code from here. This repo is just the uh, inspiration and also I have, I have actually uh, kind of cloned the API kind of. So getting to that and Next, uh, okay. So the thing about this is that you get to use a single atomic style for a certain element. Now, since you can do that, you have the chance to export these styles and reuse them as much as you want. And that gives you the ability to actually handle a lot more classes than needed. I mean, it simplifies it a lot more than needed. Now, how it is in terms of performance really depends on what the library does during the compilation or transpilation stage. So this doesn't really have any transpilation state or any compilation step that adds to the actual theme. So basically what you write over here is a return to you uh, in a proper class name manner and the style is left out as a string. So while you could actually go ahead and use this, this is in, in my opinion really good, but uh, get into what I've done. So similar, uh, similar API, it's got a config. You pass in the colors and you pass in the dimensions. The colors can be as deeply nested as you want. Uh, the only caveat right now is that it has to be a hex code. Um, I'll be adding support for more uh, RGB, HSL, uh, HSV later on, but right now it just supports hex. Uh, in terms of dimensions, again, as nested as you want it to be, but they have to be valid. Uh, units so they have to have valid units with them so it can be five pixels it can be the m it can be a relative am or basically the four uh, units that uh, web browsers support now uh, obviously uh, the next thing that we have in place is the adapters now this is something that differs from existing libraries where your actual parsing is taken care by adapters so if we go into the actual definition of this adapter uh, okay. All it does is takes the parse string, whatever CSS you type. So for example, if I have this button style or, or, or a simpler example, yeah, okay. So if you take this whole style, I have a few properties. All this parser is gonna do right now or the adapter is gonna do right now is go through each token, convert it to camel case and just return an object. So this gives me an inline style that I can use with any element and that's basically what we're doing. We're just going ahead and appending the hover style to the actual button style. So this adds in the object and this is what the demo looks like. And the other part of this adapter is this makes it a lot easier for more adapters to be created and then you can basically change it. So uh, considering this one specifically for web inline, I could create one for react native which would take in the parsing to uh, which would take in the tokens and return the style sheets 
or style sheet create elements so I could have this that the second adapter tries to do I can have another one which can do something that vanilla extract does or which is which is basically what the library wants to do is uh, basically create CSS files uh, during transpilation so the Babel plugin or uh, the Babel plugins for this or Babel plugins for this are going to be started like I have to start developing them I'm not really started um, and they'll be doing a similar thing so instead of it getting in line uh, you just use these as classes and the actual adapter is gonna take care of creating the IO and adding it to the disk so you would have a, a CSS file on the output during translation which is something that has to be done okay it's not in the initial library it is something that has to be done so this is where the adapters come in place you can basically extend it to any platform that can or any platform that node can work on and you want to add styles to so if you're working with something like terminal you can write an adapter that can actually style it according to the terminals you can have your background colors converted into your uh, actual terminal ANSI values and that should work fine uh, now actual usage of it you basically pass decorate or theme config and the set of adapters you can actually uh, totally disregard this and it's gonna internally use the default adapter but just for the sake of the demo it's there over here in the long form and so atomic styles CSS you basically pass it what you're supposed to pass now the each and every color which has been decorated will have a certain set of um, utilities that it provides so you have theme colors and then let's say button and the base is where I have my actual value so this is where I have my actual value so if we just go to the demo my button styles background is supposed to be black but let's say I just wanna I wanna make the color lighter by 10 points or 10 percent and just save that is this over running Yeah, so that's a little more lighter. I can make it even more lighter. And that's there. So you can do this quite a few times. You can obviously use this somewhere else as a different color and the theme with the units is available to you. Similarly, if you are going to use units or the dimensions um, or in, oh, I'm just gonna call it dimensions. So in terms of dimensions, you can pass it any kind of value. So let's say I have this button uh, following the border radius from this particular value. So I can just change it to M and that should reflect there. I can change it to pixels, that should reflect there. If you change it to just P, it won't work. As I said, it needs a valid value, but uh, that's about it. I can change it to 100 pixels and that should create a pill for me. Yeah. So your basic theming is handled over here in terms of the two main units um, there is obviously things that are missing so you're missing transitions and you're missing um, what do you call it prefixes so that's something that will be taken care by the adapters later on for now this is like the simplest adapter I could have implemented today so I've just done that for now uh, as we go forward this is going to have a lot more functionality moving on to the next topic why does it have complex value in unit okay yeah so if you do see this you don't just directly do a value it won't really work reason being you have to actually execute this function uh, the reason all of these are functions is at a certain point of time uh, i plan on adding a lot more to the adapters and this could get asynchronous so I'm kind of trying to put everything into function so that later on if it does kind of get asynchronous there's default values that, that these pass and then like as the promise resolves it gives it a new value which will be transferred to workers to do because I won't be able to do it directly on a JS thread but uh, for now that's basically the reason and the second reason would be that uh, I didn't really want to sit and think on an API I just picked up something that Theminator already does and picked up the, I just made the similar API basically. How is it better than current libraries? It's not, it's really not. Uh, 
considering it's got only one adapter right now and I've been working for it for about what three days now yeah so as and when I have more and more adapters more and more plugins that actually support this um, this might actually be a lot better but considering uh, there are more developers that are working on stuff like that uh, chances are that this small concept of being able to make it pla platform agnostic is something that other libraries can do pretty quickly um, you prefer tailwind when you, uh, what do you say when you like extract or let's say you just prefer something else um, totally understandable that's not the point of this it's just a pet project that i'm working on and that's about it for the video